Good. Okay, so if you have your two dimensional plane here and you want to draw some stuff, let's say you take a bunch of squares. I want to draw something. And you draw another square next to it. And another square. Another square. You can keep doing this infinitely to just make. These aren't squares, are they? They're rectangles. Oh, but you can cover all of the flat plane with these tiles, they call them, that fit edge to edge. Other shapes that work are triangles. Um, and then we have hexagons. Hexaflexagons? No, hexaflexagons. Those are fun. Hexagons work too. But there aren't a whole lot of shapes that do this. And something that's interesting is that in a lot of cases, if I made another copy of this, I could just keep replicating that pattern. Yep, that would. So you I can just take this part and move it here, or translate it, and it'll be right on top of each other. However, what you have in front of you, if you will look down at your shapes, those are called Penrose tiles. I'll just get two of them in the shot. Named after a guy named Penrose. The interesting thing about these is that even if you, is that it's much harder to translate um, a shape across. And yet, there's only two different kinds of shapes. Science mathematicians have been able to take, let's see, the first kind of non-periodic tiling, they call it, where you can't take a, make a regular re repetition of it. The first one took 20,000 different shapes to try to make this pattern so that you couldn't just overlap and do the same thing, repeat it. But this guy Penrose, Sir Roger Penrose, made, came up with this shape, these two shapes, a kite and a dart, that fit together this way and can form these patterns that are non-periodic. The funniest thing about this is where would this be used? You can use these in an application where you want to um, have patterns that aren't repeating. So let's say you want to roll up a sheet of paper. If you have the same pattern over and over again, it's going to get lumpy because there's the same patterns lining up everywhere. However, if you use something like the Penrose patterns, which may or may not look like something that's quilted, then you end up with a shape that's not going to get bumpy when you roll it up. And that's why you use Penrose tiles for quilted toilet paper. And that is your fun fact for math today. <laughs>